All right, welcome back to take two. So uh, it's been a hot sec since I've made uh, any videos at all. Um, I'm at college, spoiler alert. So that is why I've been a little more radio silent, but I wanna get some stuff out to you guys. And I've been asked to do a remake on the mountain tutorial. So that is what we're doing here today. Um, and uh, let's start out. So I'm going to need to have an add-on enabled. So I'm going to go to edit and open preferences. And just you're going to type in landscape or just lands in this ANT landscape add-on should come up. And this is under the add-on tab. So you just want to make sure this is checked and that you have this enabled. So to reiterate, you just uh, search for landscape and make sure that this is selected. Then uh, if you press shift A, you can go to the mesh add and there should be a landscape option here and you can click on that and it adds in a preset landscape. You can change the presets to any one of these. I'm going to do mountain one for this tutorial and you can mess with the random seed or, um, you know, change any of the settings in here. But as soon as you click away on the screen, the presets will disappear. Now we have our mountain plane here, but you'll see that if we add in like a placeholder, like a armature, it's only about two meters big. Well, or exactly two meters big. So I'm just going to press S and just scale this up nice and big. Um, this is maybe not the best way to scale it. We can just go to objects here up at the top, go to apply and just do apply scale. So now it's back to one, so that should be better. Um, even this isn't that big, but this will, this will do for what we need. I'm gonna go to shading and um, I'm gonna go into rendered view. I'm in cycles right now so that we can really see everything. Um, and I am going to switch my HDRI here because um, I feel like this one just isn't quite showing off the contrast that I want to see to be able to show this off. Okay, great. So here we have the mountain and it's like not the most high definition thing ever, as you can see, but like if you want, you can add in like a subdivision, sub, like subdivision, oh my God, subdivision surface modifier. I'm getting this mixed up with subsurface scattering. Subdivision surface modifier, you can add that in in the modifiers tab, look at right here, and that will smooth it out considerably. Um, we can add in a new material for it. We'll call this just mountain. And um, we can go ahead and throw in, well, we can throw in anything we want, really. I'm just going to search for a rock. Uh, texture here. I'm going to throw this in like so. And you'll notice when I plug this image texture into the principle here, it turns gray, but nothing else is happening. And that is because this is completely like, it, it's just, I'm pretty sure it's all calculated to one unit. It's not unwrapped whatsoever. So if we tab into edit mode, we can press U on the keyboard and U brings up this UV mapping um, drop down here. And you can honestly just press unwrap for now. And then it unwraps the whole thing. And if we go over to the UV editor here, you can see it's basically unwrapping it in a perfect, almost perfect square or rectangle. Um, and that works. We can, or you could unwrap a rock texture over this, especially if you had a seamless rock texture. And then if you have the node wrangler enabled, which is another preferences thing here, I think it's just under, yeah, just node wrangler. Um, you can do a little commands that I generally like doing, which is where you select what you want and you press uh, control T and it brings up a um, mapping node here. So then you can mess with the scale you could make this 10 you know, now it's multiplied by that. However, the problem is you can see it's just duplicating the texture over and over again. And it just starts to look really bad really quick. Like if you have other textures you can mix in, then you can kind of save it. Like if you wanted to make snowy mountains. So this kind of stopped me from making mountains for the longest time. 
And then it occurred to me, what if you projected an image of a real mountain over the mountain mesh like this? So what I did is I found a um, picture of a mountain like this. And you're not going to be able to see it here, but let's hide this right now. It's basically, I think it's one of the Sierra Nevada mountains, but it's just like a nice, big, wide open picture. And unfortunately, it's not the highest resolution, but it works for our purposes here. And I selected by pressing A all the mesh here. And I went from an angle that I would see most of the mountain from. So maybe like this side. And I pressed U on the keyboard and I went down to project from view. Now what this does is it does a UV unwrap, but specifically from the view you're looking at. So as you can see, this matches what we're seeing here. And if I tab out of edit mode, you can see that now it's projected this picture straight on, which means that as soon as you start moving the camera too much, you know, it starts to fall apart. But if it's from the specific view, you can kind of move it and, ooh, this is going slow. With this. Uh, I would advise, honestly, um, unchecking real time for the subdivision modifier because it just slows down everything. All right, that's much more responsive. But then you can, uh, yeah, oh. Oh, okay, I was like, this isn't working very well, and it's because we still have this mapping on. I'm going to just delete this, and now this should work. Now we're cooking. So, um, yeah, so if you, you project from view, and then you can project it from where you're looking. So maybe if your scene requires, it's like, I don't know, in a valley or something, you might want to project from like a lower view like this, and then make it nice and big, so that way you can see lots and lots of detail on the mountains but if it was from more of an aerial shot you might want to project slightly more down and then try and line it up like that so again though this only works from certain angles as soon as you start messing with it it's like oh it's very clearly stretched but that being said if you are trying to make just a scene where you're only seeing stuff from like a certain angle like here, um, then you can come and you can be like, all right, you know, it looks good from like this side or it looks good from this side, whichever. And you can kind of set your scene up around that. You can like duplicate the mesh around and, uh, you know, scale it. Let's see, you can drag it around. I'm just duplicating with shift D for right now, something like that. Um, you can then set your camera to be where you want it to be. So, oh, make sure you have a camera in the scene first. And then align camera to view. And um, if you see some of these aren't matching correctly, um, you can tab into their edit mode and um, you can project from that view like this, project from view. And um, yeah, you can set stuff up like, up like that. You gotta make sure though, cause this has some directional lighting on it already. Cause there's a sun in this, that um, the lighting doesn't clash. Like for instance, since my sun is over here, so stuff like here doesn't quite make sense because it's projecting this part of the mountain, which should be in sun with a part of the mountain that's in the shade over here. So it looks a little strange, but like it's like close enough that you can kind of let it slide. And then uh, you can kind of, you know, tie the whole thing together by adding in a cube and making it really big and really, really like long and wide. And going over to the shader editor, pressing new, calling this fog. And you're just gonna delete the principal BDSF, BSDF. I don't, I don't know anymore. Add in a volume scatter, hook this up here, make the density like 0.05, I don't know, oh, 0.01. Kind 
coming in here. It's still a little intense, but that's looking kind of nice. 0. 0.005 or even 0. 0.002. You can mess with the anisotrophy, anisotrophy, anis anisotrophy, yeah. And I swear to God, I came to college, I'm getting less smart by the day. Anyways, yeah, and then you can set it up like that. And these mountains, uh, are all going to look a bit smoother because they have the subdivision surface on them. But yeah, you can you can set them up like that. And um, if you really want to make them look better, turn down the specular and turn up the roughness so they're not shiny and they're much more flat. And you can even plug the color into the normal here, add in a bump node. You know the drill, plug this into the height, turn down the strength so it's not as insane but now you're getting some like extra detail on there. And yeah, that, that is how I've been doing mountains for backgrounds. And again, it doesn't look great when you start moving around, but if it's from one like view or a few views that are only varying in like, I don't know, 25 degrees of a camera shift or something, like it's not noticeable that it looks weird. Yep, anyways, that's about it. So I will catch you next time.